Hello, Richard the Dick Coughlin, Triple Zero. I've got a couple of videos coming out today, but this is going to be the first one. And I realise some of you may have felt that we've made the point with Hey Ruka and the whole race realism and race and all this other stuff. I wanted to sort of just do this video because she made a video today that just... What amazes me about Hey Ruka is the fact that she, every time she makes a video, she is told explicitly the same things every time. And every time she fails to do what, she's, uh, what she was told before. Now, the first time she started making videos about this, her problem was she wasn't linking any sources or giving any information as to where she was getting this information. And she was just going, just Google it, look it up yourself. Mm -hmm. Then she finally made a video, a uh, response to Zoma Goddard's Chris. I'll link Zoma Goddard's Chris's and Hey Ruka's video. Hey Ruka, like, let me, all these links, all these wonderful links. A lot of these links were links to articles that you would have had to pay for to download, uh, or things that on websites that you had to sign up to get, which I know she didn't do. And then uh, Peach made a video response to Ruka, and showing that Ruka actually hadn't read uh, the sources, because a lot of the sources she linked actually disproved what she was saying. This is the problem with you, Hey Ruka. You've got this desperate need to have some identity in your life, or to identify with something, and you've chosen the fact that you're white to do that. That's fucking fine. You've then just gone and linked all this stuff, because when people go through it, they see that you can't have read this, because anyone who's read this stuff, and I'll leave a link to Peach's video where she shows that you're not fucking reading what you're linking, and you've just done it again. You made a video called She's Racist or something like that, and you left a link to an article, um, an article from the Daily Beast. And the daily bit, and you put it on like racist babies, whatever it is. The article, and it's like six month old baby discriminates based on skin color. Oh, a baby does it. Wow, well, if a baby's doing it, that means all of us full grown adults with our matured and responsible brains must follow suit. I mean, for a start, doesn't it say a lot about you? The fact that babies do it, or the fact that you can find children doing it. You know, you can find examples of that and you're using that. Doesn't that say a lot about you? Or what's the other one? Prison. Yeah, prisoners and children, right? Idiots and criminals. Fantastic. The rest of the civilised world will sit here and have a conversation. But it doesn't matter. Have you read this article, Ruka? Have you actually sat down with your eyes and read this? Can you read? Because, have you actually read this? I'm going to go through this article for you, because I've just read it. It's about seven pages long, so it might be out of your fucking stream. There's no big crayon pictures or anything here. And I know I'm being, I'm being rude, but I'm, giving, I'm doing that because, you know, in a way I kind of want to give you an excuse to get out of this. Right? Because that's what you like to do. You like to use insults that people use to dismiss everything else. Like 15 minutes of fucking refutation, solid refutation, and then they call you a duty head at the end. And you're like, Aah! What this article is about is about this um, study that was performed, several studies actually, but the first study was performed by a group, um, by using a group of parents and their children to discuss, to find out how racial attitudes that children have. Right, the children were aged between about five, six, and seven, and they got all these parents in, and they were doing several studies uh, um, to see if their racial attitudes of the kids, um, how they would develop under certain circumstances. And there were three sections to this study, right? And the first two yielded really no results. The ch children's attitude didn't really change much. The last third, I'll read this straight from the article about the, set, the third section of the, uh, the study. The last third, these parents were to discuss racial equality on their own every night for five nights. At this point, something interesting happened. Five families in the last group abruptly quit the study. Two directly told Vitrup, that was the person doing the study, we don't want to have these conversations with our children, we don't want to point out skin colour. Vitrup was taken aback. These families volunteered knowing full well it was a study of children's racial attitudes, yet once they were aware that the study required talking openly about race, they started dropping out. Right, so these parents were not keen to talk about race in front of their children, they, so they didn't want to do that, right? Okay, that's what we've got so far. According to Vitrup's entry studies, hardly any of these white parents ever talked about their chi talked to their children directly about race. They might have asserted vague principles like everybody is equal, or God made all of us, or under the skin we're all the same, but they'd almost never call, a different, call attention to racial differences. They wanted their children to grow up colourblind, but Vitrup's first test of the kids revealed that they, they weren't colourblind at all. Asked how many white people are mean, these children commonly answered almost none. Asked how many black people are mean, they were uh, that many answered some or a lot. 
Even kids who attended diverse schools answered the question this way. So what he's saying is these kids whose parents uh, did not want to acknowledge differences in human beings, like they didn't want to sort of point out the fact, yes, this guy's different, these people are different, that person's different, right? they just wanted to vaguely brush over it and, like, and, not acknowledge, and not acknowledge the actual differences, right? thus sort of confusing the child. But here's the interesting bit, and this is what you want to pay attention to, Ruka. Of all those Vitrup talked to openly about interracial friendship, only six families managed to actually do so. So only so six families actually spoke to their children openly about racial differences. Here we go. And for all six, their children dramatically improved their racial attitudes in a single week. So just talking to your kids about differences in people. And by talking to them, it doesn't mean singling out certain things and trying to make them look, look, there's, these people are very different and they have this character trait and that character trait and they're probably not as bright as you and they're probably more likely to rob you and they're more inclined to do things like rape and beat women. No, not things like that. It was just simply acknowledging that there are physical differences because children notice physical differences in other realms, which this study goes on to in a second, I'll get to, but if you don't acknowledge it in people, then that starts confusing the child. And they start thinking there's something to be suspicious about because they're clearly being told there is no difference when there is one. Do you get that? For decades, it was assumed that children see race only when society points it out to them. However, child development researchers have increasingly begun to question this presumption. They argue that children see racial differences as much as they see differences between pink and blue. Uh, but we tell kids that pink means girls and blue means boys. White and black are mysteries to them and we leave them to figure it out on their own. And of course, they can't figure it out on their own because they're kids. They're not that bright. It takes remarkably little for children to develop in-group preferences. Vitrup's mentor at University of Texas, Rebecca Bilger, ran an experiment with three preschool classes with four to five-year-olds. She basically gave them different coloured t-shirts. One gave one of them had a blue t-shirt, one of them had red t-shirts. And she let them uh, sort of interact with each other. Here's the interesting part. The kids didn't segregate in their behaviour. They played with each other freely at recess. But when asked which colour team was better to belong to, or which team might win a race, they would chose their own colour. In other words, these kids were told that they were part of the red team and part of the blue team. They were told that. They weren't told that they were just, they were different and that was it. They were told they were part of a team. And it goes on, Bilge's experiment seems to show how children will use whatever you give them to create divisions, seeming to confirm that race becomes an issue only when you make it an issue. In other words, Ruka, what you do, you make it an issue. Therefore, it becomes an issue. Therefore, God forbid you ever have fucking kids, your children will find race an issue because you taught them that it is one. Her reasoning is that kids are developmentally prone to in-group favoritism. Notice her words there, kids. Right? Not adults, which is what you're supposed to be. Kids. They're going to form these preferences on their own. Children naturally try to categorise everything. Children naturally try to categorise everything. And the attribute they rely on is that which is the most clearly visible. In other words, the most simplistic way you can recognise something. In other words, Ruka, your entire philosophy, your attitude, your mentality is that of a little child. This is why people are talking to you like you're a child. Now, as far as the six-month-old baby thing goes, this is the six-month-old baby thing. Let me run this past you. They show babies photographs of faces. Phyllis Katz, who is the person who conducted the study, Phyllis Katz found that babies will stare significantly longer at photographs of faces than a different race from their parents, indicating that they find something out of the ordinary. It's not because they're racist. It's because they're looking at something that's different, the same way you would stare at, at, at someone who was massively disfigured. You don't recognise it. They're babies, Ruka. They don't understand anything, yeah? Race itself has no ethnic meaning per se, but children's brains are noticing skin colour differences and trying to understand their meaning. The point Katz emphasises is that this period of our children's lives, when we imagine it's most important not to talk about race, is the very developmental period when children's minds are forming their c conclusions about race. In other words, Ruka, this... 
all these studies prove is that you are a child and you haven't grown up. That's all it's taught about. It's taught that you have an issue with race because you've never really been able to get your head around it. You see something that's different and you treat it differently. You need some identity so you go with what is most visibly obvious because you are a fucking immature little child. That's what this article shows. This article doesn't prove anything you've said to be right. It goes against everything you've said and makes you look like a moron. You're linking articles that make you look like a moron, Ruka. We're not doing that. You are. Recently, Dick Coffin, triple zero. Good night, mate. God be less.